She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Loneliness sucks. Oh, I know that might have upset you, but really, I mean, it really is a terrible, terrible thing. This is Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show, where every single day we bring you fresh content to help gird you up and help to guide you towards success, real, true success, a holistic approach to success, emotional success, mental, physical, relational, financial, spiritual success. That's what we're all about here every single day. And also coming to you from the website, dannyjohnson.com, where every tool, every tip, every form of training that we provide for business, finance, and relationship is all geared to helping you to live a fully successful life, not a life that has success only in business and finance, that your marriage and your kids are a disaster, or that your marriage and kids are fine and, and you, you're, you're terrible in business and finance, or that those other two categories are great, but the health is a disaster, or that you're so consumed with your life that you have no social influence at all in your own neighborhood or in your own community or even at work. I believe that you are somebody that was knitted together in your mother's womb with a plan and a purpose in mind. I know that there is a calling that's been calling out of you since you were knee high to a grasshopper. And we're going to, we want to do what we can to help you reach that calling, that destiny that calls out to you. So oftentimes we get distracted with all of the temptations of our society that has tried to define for us what success looks like, what usually has to do with stuff. And you end up with the stuff yet miserable with the debt miserable in relationships because of the sacrifices of being a workaholic to get all the stuff. You can get it all if you're willing to learn, willing to work, and willing to give some new strategies, develop some new skills, willing to give those new skills a try. I am confident that you can live out the life that you never even thought was possible, a peaceful life, and yet an exhilarating life all at the same time. It is possible to experience those things. Loneliness is something that has begun to plague our society. And where is it coming from? Largely, many experts believe that, yes, we seem to be really connected now, you know, through Facebook, through text messaging, through computers and email, through all forms of social media, yet we are the most disconnected internally, meaning we don't have strong emotional bonds anymore like we used to. And the family unit no longer is something that even seems to matter. We see families today that aren't even meeting around the dinner table for a meal any longer. But instead, that if we are having a meal, and if by chance it is at the table, which is a rare thing, everyone has their devices out, earbuds in, watching different videos, even playing games during the dinner time where the family are supposed to be coming together. We have to be very vigilant and diligent and even ferocious with protecting that family time, but also protecting um, intimacy, having intimate relationships with people. I'm not talking just sexual relationships with your spouse, but I'm talking a real heart, spirit to spirit connection with those that we live with, work with, celebrate with, have church with, if that's your kind of a thing. Uh, Almost half of our population, it's about 40%, have said, and reported that they feel lonely. That means that if you are not lonely, chances are your spouse or your kids or your neighbor or your coworkers just might be. Have you ever battled with loneliness? I am a firm believer if you're lonely, you are not going to reach your full potential. You're not going to reach your full destiny because your life is attached to other people's lives. Every single one of our lives are attached to other people's lives. And so if we are lonely, it means that we've created some walls on the outside of us that have caused isolation to happen on the inside of us. And isolation is a very, very dangerous thing. Isolation is used kind of like an animal, you know, a lion who is out, who is spotting its prey. It waits for the weak one in a pack of animals to be isolated from the rest. And that's when it goes in to strike the one that has been isolated, a rest from the power of the numbers. And so isolation is dangerous. It leads to depression, even suicide in some cases. It certainly doesn't pull the best out of you. 
and you've got giftings and talents that's inside of you that is supposed to be used. So if you have ever battled with loneliness, I wanna hear from you and here's why. Let's share that story of loneliness so that if somebody else is listening, that they might see that they have some of those symptoms and then if you've been able to overcome, we wanna hear that too because there are lonely people that are watching and listening right now to this program. And there are some who feel more attached to this program than they do the person they are sharing the bed with. And this is not right. This is not right. There's fulfilling relationships awaiting for you, but you have to be willing to live a little bit on the risky wild side and let your guard down a little bit and begin to let people in. Joining me right now, on line one is Becca Holverson from Idaho. Becca, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes. So have you ever battled with loneliness? I battled with loneliness for quite a while. It, uh, it just kept sucking me in and sucking me in and dragging me down. Tell me, Becca, how did loneliness suck you in? Well, like you mentioned um, about isolation, uh, mm -hmm. it's just a moment of of pain in life and uh, feeling the need to to grieve. Uh, for me personally, it was uh, three counts of domestic violence that mm -hmm. uh, occurred over numerous years, right. and just feeling the need to grieve that and mm -hmm. the loss. Um, I gave it too much time. I, I just got pulled into the grieving process and isolated myself and listened listened to the enemy voice that was in my head. Yep. It was awful. Yeah. And so I love the words that you use. It sucks you in. That's why I say loneliness sucks. And it really does. It sucks you almost like a vacuum. And you're trying to hold on to any kind of life, but then you're pulled in to darkness. So when you were living in that place of darkness, what did a day in the life of Becca look like? Well, it, it's just uh, basically living in your home and not reaching out to others and looking for something to fill the void of what was taken from me, which was my pride and my dignity. Yes. And uh, just uh, just staying, staying put, staying sedentary, and it was, it was the worst thing that I could have done for myself. Did you sleep a lot? Did you watch TV a lot? Did you play video games? What did you do during the day? I would say sleeping and eating were probably yeah. my biggest comfort yeah. in that time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry about the domestic violence, Becca, that you had. That is awful. I've been through too much of that um, in my life, and, and it's painful, um, especially to a child. Um, but I, I can't imagine walking through the level that you did of that domestic violence. And it just makes you feel like you're worthless and you're useless and you live in fear. That is true. Yeah. It was, it was a very painful time. And uh, for many years after it happened, it was, it was still very painful. So do you think that you drove the grieving deeper than it needed to go? Absolutely. Yep. So I what would you have I mean, done differently? Say that again. What would you have done differently? I would have reached out sooner. And when you say reaching out, because there's somebody that's listening right now, they somehow just, you know, picked up their phone and, you know, maybe got a text from somebody about today's program and, and they're sitting laying in bed with the, with the blinds closed, right? The, room, the bedroom is blacked out, just like your and my bedroom were blacked out. And they're all snuggered up in their comforter and their fluffy pillow in their same pajamas they've been wearing for a week with crumbs in the sheets because of this deep, lonely depression, what finally made you come out? And when you say you reached out, how did you do that? What was the first person or who was the first person or what was the first thing you did when it came from this? Well, I, I grew up in um, 
a Jesus-loving home. Mm -hmm. And I knew that laying laying in bed, being inside, trapping myself Mm -hmm. inside, and shutting out all the people who could potentially cause me more pain, that feeling of comfort was really pain. And I knew that stepping out in faith was going to be even more painful. Initially. Yes. Initially. Initially, It's more painful. But the reward of getting outside, getting fresh air, connecting with people. and, And personally, I connected with my church in were supportive um, to me, and I knew that it was going to be hard to connect with them and that the the voices of shame were going to be loud and clear, but I had to, I had to push through. I just had to. You just have to. Yes. You do it for yourself, for something better. Yes. Yes. It's amazing what fresh air will do. It's amazing what will happen when you step out to tell somebody, I'm hurting, I'm lonely, I, 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 I got to break free from this. And just even starting conversation, even if you don't initially like confess what it is that you're feeling, but just to be engaged with other people, you know what I mean, to, to have that kind of engagement. When I was homeless, um, you know, I didn't have a home, so I had to be outside. Um, and so even though I was outside and I was in the sun and I was on the beach and and I was surrounded by people because, again, I was homeless. Um, and where I lived, there was people, new people every day, uh, travelers coming from all over the world to visit where I had lived. I was so deeply lonely. So you can even be surrounded by people and yet still be lonely inside. And that loneliness comes from the walls that you build that you think are going to protect you from being hurt by anybody else. But in all reality, the walls itself are destroying your life. And this is where you have to come to a place where you have to destroy the walls and get outside of them. And one of the first things that I did is I, I started a business actually and I started talking to people. I did. I started talking to people, started having conversations. I started to focus on other people's problems, which made my problems seem like they were nothing. Uh, they were. And, and when I focused on how can I help this person get beyond their, their issue, it helped me get beyond my issue. It was kind of an accountability thing. Becca, thank you so much for sharing. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. If you're dealing with grief and loneliness and you can't seem to get past it, the next segment is for you. Stay tuned to The Danny Johnson Show. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. 
You know, there's a lie that sometimes that floats around your head and it says, you know, I can do this on my own, I'm gonna be fine. And Danny, no way do I need to open myself up to people. All they're going to do is hurt me. I promise you, just because you've had a few hurts you doesn't mean all people are going to hurt you. And you actually need people in your life. And every day here on The Danny Johnson Show, we are shining light on things that are stopping you from reaching your full destiny. There is a plan and a purpose for your life. There's a calling. There's something you were created for. You were created for a purpose. And that purpose is not shutting the blinds and closing people off. It is not sleeping until you die. In food. It is not allowing loneliness to control your life as it did mine many, many years ago. It is about living this life by design and not by default. And I promise you, if you would just let down that loneliness, let go of it, surrender from it, and allow other people to come into your life and learn new skills of managing relationships and get healed from the inside out so that you can have peace, you can have joy, you can have harmony. We're talking about loneliness today because there is almost half of our population that says that they battle with loneliness. In this world, we are so connected through technology in our careers. We're busy, 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 yucky, 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 but we are not connecting emotionally. We are not connecting intimately with other human beings, which is what we were created for. We were created for intimacy. We were created for love. And if we are lonely, we are living a loveless life. So if you have battled with these things, we want to hear from you because I know that there's people listening right now that are going through that and we can help them to succeed. And by the way, when you share your story of loneliness, then it helps somebody else to get courage to come out of that deep, dark, cold, musty, humid cave. We want to help somebody today. So going over the phones, we have uh, E-Fabulous, what a great name, from Houston, Texas. Welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Great name. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So what about you? Have you ever struggled with loneliness? I struggle with loneliness on a daily basis. Really? Um, one, one of my issues is that loneliness is multi-layered, but I believe that we as a people, when we remove the stigmatism from loneliness and admit that it is a part of our culture and society now be healed and help heal other people yeah yeah I completely agree with that. I think it's I think loneliness is something that kind of snuck up on our society and we were not expecting it as a people. I think there's people in places and high places that purposely did that because again, divide and conquer, isolate, and then you can program people and you can bring them into places and things like pornography being one of them, right? That's an isolated, lonely addiction. Um, that is very secretive. Nobody knows about it, but the reality is it just shows up all over their entire life. It shows up in their shows up in their work habits. It shows up in their lack of intimacy with their spouses and their kids. And so it shows up. It's just a lie that says no one knows. And so I think it is something that snuck up on us. And that, that's why we need to be aware and know how to combat that thing. So when you say that you battle with loneliness daily, talk to me about that. What do you mean by that? Well, I went through a really bad divorce. Mm hmm and when my husband, my ex-husband left me, I was in the depths of despair. Mm -hmm. I looked around and this person that had pretty much been my right-hand person for 10 years was now gone. Mm -hmm. What was I to do? I had a little child to look after mm -hmm. and I didn't know who I was because not only was I lonely in the marriage, now I was lonely by myself. Yeah. I ended, the loneliness ended up consuming me, and I had two nervous breakdowns. Yes. And it was not until my doctor looked me in the eye and said, what you're going through is normal. There are people every day yes. that lose a marriage yes. after 10 or 20 years, yes. and they have to rebuild themselves. Yes. You are not alone. Yes. And then I realized that my loneliness was a byproduct of the society that I lived in. And so now when I feel the loneliness creep up on me, my number one weapon 
is gratitude. Amen. So every time I feel like I'm by myself, Mm -hmm. I'm never going to have another teammate, another partner, Mm -hmm. I then look over and realize God bought brought me through this. God's given me a great career. I've traveled the world. I've lived in England. I have a beautiful child. So I combat loneliness. I fight it head on by being thankful for everything that I have. Yes. And gratitude actually is the combination. It's the code that unlocks the vault to blessing. Clearly. Yes, I battled with depression for several years, not even knowing it, not even realizing I was battling with depression. And my depression was caused by uh, a nutritional deficiency. There was a supplement that I ended up taking. It was like, oh my gosh, I had just had five kids. My body was completely depleted of all possible minerals and minerals affect the hormones, affect the mind, affect your emotions, affect everything. And it was like, whoa. But after you start, you go through the lows and now you start entertaining the lows. Now you fix dinner for the lows. Now you sleep with the lows. Now you take a shower with the lows. Now you're like, the lows are your best friends and they're not supposed to be. But man, when I came out of that, I was like, ah. Oh. I'm alive! This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. I'm so blessed that I found what is in Grooming the Next Generation for Success. This is a book that is being taught in universities around the world. It's been noted as the best book on parenting that has ever been written. Crazy, if you ask me. But the point is is that this thing gets results. Get your copy today, 888-757-8880. Again, that's 888-757-8880. Or go to dannyjohnson.com. That's D-A-N-I johnson.com. Get your copy today. Helping you become all you were meant to be. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Nobody wants to be around me anyway, Danny. I'm such a downer. I'm Debbie Downer. I'm negative Ned. Uh, you know, I, it's just, I'm critical. It's just the way I am. My mom was this way. My dad was this way. My sisters and brothers were this way. It's just the way I am. Who cares? I care. I care. And you have to understand that your life doesn't have to be that way. I once was there and I lived there for too long, way too long. And it began to kill me on the inside. It began to affect how I parented my children. It began to affect how I worked and who I chose to work with and how I worked with them. It was not healthy. And I think it is important, as we discovered in that last segment, that every that, that people go through hard times and it is normal to grieve the marriage that just got destroyed. It's normal to grieve the loss of a loved one, but it is not healthy and not good to stay there for a long period of time. It's not healthy and it's not good to continue to repeat the pain over and over again, but it is healthy to release that pain. Because once you open the door to loneliness, now here comes depression, suppression, oppression. Here comes anxiety. Here comes fear. Here comes self-hate. Here comes self-destruction. And that's not the life that your creator has intended for you. It is time for you to rise up, step up out of the gloom, out of the doom, out of that musty closet that you've called yourself a bedroom. Pull off the covers off of your head and start to get dressed, start to take a shower, start to integrate with other people. And there's so many different types of support groups that are out there to help you through and walk you through loneliness. One that I will tell you that I think is one of the most powerful group of people on the planet is the community that gathers around the Facebook page, Danny Johnson Live. These people are amazing. You need encouragement every day. In fact, just recently, there was a group of people who all met in a living room. I don't know, maybe eight of us, 10 of us max on a Tuesday night and at seven o'clock and we we get together to have a time of music and rejoicing. And then we made a Facebook post and say, we're here to pray for you. We're here because we love you and we wanna know what your prayer requests are. Leave a comment of a prayer request and we are gonna be committed to praying for you for the next hour and a half or, or so. Sure enough, are you ready for this? Right away, within an hour, we had 1,000 comments. 
by the next day, and we prayed for an hour and a half, almost two hours, um, and then released to everybody right there on Facebook, three, four different messages of past programs like this that could help them in the most common areas that we saw that prayer requests were coming in. When you see what people are suffering from, it causes you to be more grateful for the life it is that you have. And we're talking horrible things. You know, there's a lot about health. There was a lot about finances and jobs and marriage and relationships. And so we, you know, for free, we gave the, the, the our, our, our people there on Facebook and there's nearly 300,000 of them that are joining together there. And, and so by the next day, there was now 2,500 comments. I was blown away. 2,500 people gathering on one thread, uh, leaving comments, leaving prayer requests, people who are in need. If you ever come to a place where you think your life is so terrible, put a focus on somebody else see what they're going through and make a commitment to pray for them. Make a commitment to rally around them. Make a, a commitment to encourage them. And encouragement begins to come into your life as well. So we're talking about battling and winning, winning the battle against and escaping from the prison of loneliness. So, so far today, we've heard some amazing things. Gratitude being one of them. Uh, making the decision to get out, get it out of the house, go breathe, breathe some fresh air, start talking to people, tap into your church. Okay, in this case, I'm talking about tapping into this community our community, the Danny Johnson Live page on Facebook, my gosh, has encouraged me to no end. There's certain things that I can share with them that I can't even share with some of my family members. I can't. Why? You get sick and tired of hearing the exciting things that happen, the crazy miracles that happen in my life. I mean, you know, so sometimes I say, oh my gosh, this crazy miracle happened. They're like, oh, that's great. Awesome. But I could go share it with our Facebook community and they're like, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. <sighs> Some, sometimes your family get tired of it, you know, and that's okay. But there are communities, they really are, and there's some amazing, fabulous people that you can meet in lots of different places. And again, if you don't know of one, tap in. They are, they're really heartfelt, wonderful people who are growing. It's a people that are paying off debt. It's a people who are taking care of the orphan and the poor. It's a people that are becoming better spouses. They're becoming better parents. They're becoming better workers. They're becoming better business people. They're becoming more purpose. What a great people to hang out with. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Danny Johnson live. So if you're on Facebook, Come on over and say hello and meet these amazing people. So we got Jackie Watson from Canton, Illinois. Uh, Jackie, have you ever battled with loneliness? Um, yes, and I have. And how have you defeated this, or how have you come out of this prison? Well, um, I, I'm still in it. <laughs> I um, battle it daily. Um, I try to put my focus into helping others mm -hmm. and... I have to say my business has um, grown and flourished. Mm. Um, I have, a little over a year ago, um, my son was killed in a car crash. And, you know, it was totally unexpected. And, you know, your world comes to an end. How old was he? Um, he was 32. Oh, my gosh. And I can't explain the... Um, it feels like your insides are being torn out yes. and your heart and being stepped on. And you, even though you have people around you, you, you go alone. And I walk in, you know, he has a room in our house still, even though he moved out. You know, I had to go clean out his house. Mm. And I moved his stuff back to my house, mm. a lot of it. And um, he still had a room there that um, I've cleaned out somewhat, but it still has his high school stuff in it and you walk in it and you just <laughs> you feel what you're missing you know yeah. you you really feel the loneliness mm -hmm. and I have poured myself into uh, my business some because I don't sleep as well <laughs> anymore and um, when I wake up at night lots of times I'll get on my computer and I'll work and so your coping mechanism my... is work Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Jackie, yeah. do you have any other children? Yes. I have a son and a daughter and two granddaughters. Okay. You know, um, I first of all, I'm, I cannot imagine what that's like. No mother or father has plans to bury their own son or daughter. No, no, no parent does. Um, yet it is a part of life. Unfortunately, it's part of living here on planet Earth in a, in a place like this. 
And um, that doesn't make it easier, but grieving is part of a human function in life. And there's something that I found um, recently. I had done a, a funeral for a couple who lost a baby. And just so happened, I don't know why I stumbled upon this, but the Bible tells us that there's a certain amount of days allotted for grieving. And I think there's some powerful wisdom in that. And there is a surrender um, that we must do to move on in our lives. And so sometimes I believe that there's an enemy of our soul that wants to keep us in the grieving process and loves to fish to us different coping mechanisms um, that keep us grieving instead of having us walk in freedom. Have you ever felt like that if you experienced joy, that you would feel like a bad mom and feel guilty if you experienced joy because your son passed away a year ago? Um, not exactly. The, the, the holidays seem wrong, mm -hmm. and I just, not so much joy or being able to go do something and have fun, but the times when everybody should be to, if there's just, you just know something's missing yeah. when you're together at the holidays. Is that yeah. Everything seems kind of hollow and yeah. Yeah. like the joy sucked out of it. But Jackie, let me ask you a question. The joy being sucked out of it is simply a mindset focus mm -hmm. versus gratitude that you still have two children, a son and a daughter and two grandchildren. Instead of the gratitude of, I had 32 years with my boy. And I'm so grateful for those 32 years. And I'm grateful for the next year or the next day that I have with the current kids that are here with me. Grieving has to come to an end. Otherwise, it bleeds and robs and rots our insides of the rest of the joy and the fulfilling relationships that we have access to right now. You're not gonna believe this, but I'm pretty sure the Bible says that we have one week to grieve. One week. And then it's over. And we walk away and it's done. And here's why. Because grief can become our God. Grieving and mourning can become our God. And when it's all we think about, when it's all we focus on, and when we allow that spirit of grieving and mourning to rob a joyous family occasion, when we allow it to rob relationships with our spouse and our other kids or other relationships, it's become our God. And it has to die. It has to be done because it can't rob you anymore. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Stay right here for more of The Danny Johnson Show. I just heard this amazing story. One of our clients had written us telling us that they had used job domination and unlimited success and has absolutely exploded their career. He said, Danny, I don't know where I'd be today without job domination and unlimited success. Listen, do you want more recognition from your coworkers? Do you want to be recommended to people all over the world? Do you want to be somebody that is highly sought after? Listen, if you're in a dead-end place where this gentleman found himself but then learned new strategies and changed everything in his work life, and obviously this has resulted in higher bonuses and pay raises, you're next. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of Job Domination right now. 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880, job domination. That's what you need. It's time for you to dominate the job market and break through the rut that you're in. This is The Danny Johnson Show. I know it might seem heartless and insensitive to say that grieving sometimes, that it has to come to an end, that it has to be done because if we open our door to loneliness because of the grieving that is continuously coming to us, when we open up our lives to loneliness and constant mourning and heaviness, oppression begins to come. And then we look for coping mechanisms to, to lift us up. But this is not the life that is intended for you. Unfortunately and factually, death 
is as much of a part of life as living is. And mothers who have to lay down their sons or daughters to rest, this is the worst thing that could ever happen to us, I believe. Just as I was not prepared to watch my daughter suffer when she was 16 years old of a double aneurysm, I was not prepared. There's nothing in life that ever prepared me for that kind of a suffering and for me to watch that. At the same time, I could still be there. I could still be worrying and wondering if Erica's going to have another aneurysm. And oh my gosh, what if the rest of the four kids of the five have some kind of birth defect that, that Erica had, but we didn't know and you don't know until she has an aneurysm and almost dies. You know, and then, oh my gosh, and then, gosh, what if that like happens to any one of my seven grandchildren? And oh, what if it happens to my best friend, Jen, and my girlfriend, Mona? And, and, and what if it happens to, to, you know, my husband, Hans? I mean, what if, what if you could live grief? can take you into the what if place of possibilities of more pain and more suffering and rob your life of joy. That's why I believe the Bible has told us that there's a, there's a portion for grieving. And I, I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure it's one week. That for, for one week, it is grieving and mourning, cry your brains out, wail like crazy, slam your chest, rip your clothes, pull your hair out, shave your head. Ah, okay, be angry for that week. And then after that, Get up, take a shower, and now go back to work. Go back to living. That is not disrespecting the dead. What is disrespecting the dead is continuously mourning and grieving and being lonely and finding coping mechanisms to move through it. That's what would be dishonoring and disrespecting the dead. They're dead. We have to let them go. We have to be the, let them rest. And we have to continue to choose joy, to choose love, to choose peace, and to be free from the heaviness of mourning and grieving. I've had to train myself to do that because I have a tendency to go to loneliness. My tendency is isolation. My tendency is not to talk to people. My tendency is to like live in my earplugs. My husband says I, I wear earplugs half of my life. <laughs> I sleep with earplugs and I leave them in for at least two more hours after I get up in the morning. That's almost half, half of my day, you know, half of the time. Sleep eight hours, two hours more of earplugs. It's 10 hours a day with earplugs. I like silence. And I, I have actually spent all day long in earplugs before. <laughs> I tend to go towards isolation. I tend to go towards quiet, peace, silence. I like those kinds of things. You know, I have a huge family. But again, there has to be a balance. There has to be a time and a season for everything. And if you've been grieving for a long time, it's time to surrender to joy. It's time to surrender to peace. It's time to surrender to wholeness and to surrender to being healed. And you have to let go. You have to let go of the grieving in the morning in order to receive and to surrender to those other things that's going to give you a much more fulfilling life. Over here, we also have Chris Smith from Michigan. Welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Hello. Hi. So what's Hi. your story about loneliness? Uh, I don't even know where to start. Um, mm. Mine pretty much started back in 97. I killed a friend of mine drunk driving. Oh, my um, gosh. And then I lost my mom after that. And uh, a year later, I met would would be my wife, um, and we were expecting twins. My mo mom wanted grandkids so bad, and uh, I was expecting twins at 35 years old, and and I just couldn't get over uh, just what happened in my wreck and stuff like that. And um, I've been to rehabs and. You know, the normal person probably would have quit drinking, and I couldn't. I was trying to drink it under, and then um, after me and my wife got married, um, we had another little one. And I have I have a stepson that's ten, twins that are six, and a two year old. Wow. And um, now and uh, and I just I'd work seven days a week. My wife was from a Christian background, and I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um. She's actually from the Amish community, and she never joined church, but she, that's what she grew up. I didn't grow up in a church at all. Never even went to a church. Wow. And she tried to embed it into me, embed it into me, and I just was negative towards it all, mm -hmm. everything. You know, and um, one day I come home from work, you know, I give her my whole check, and, you know, and all I used money for was just gas to go back and forth to work, and that was it. And then I come home one day, and I was um, just about Christmas time and um, they were gone. Yep. 
she she went and took the kids out of school, and I couldn't find them. Yeah. I I dropped to the ground. <laughs> I never felt loneliness like that in my life, and I'm still fighting with it. I I'm still trying to find God. I. I can't find the church that I'm looking for. I want Claire to Texas to watch you wow. with my wife. Um, we are divorced now. Hmm. Um, she filed papers. And um, me, myself, I don't. I wouldn't file papers because I don't believe in divorce. Yeah. Um, my parents were divorced. My mom stayed with my dad for 20-some years until his kids were out of school. And, um, it just seems like I've been in and out of jobs. I build RVs for a living, campers, you name it. I've built it on different companies, and um, it just, there's good money in it, and it just always seems like I'm fighting with money. Yeah. Um, I'm very greedy when it comes to money. I can't make enough. I made, you know, $50, $60 an hour and still left the job and went and found another one, and it just, um, I just can't be happy. Wow. You know? And right now, my kids, I see my kids every two weeks. Mm. I can talk to them on Wednesdays. Mm. And my boy, my stepson, I don't I hardly ever see him, and I miss him bad. I raised him way over most of life. Wow. And I'm just, I, I'm still lonely. I, I'm, the courts have told me what I can do and I can't do with my kids. And, yep. you know, seeing my kids every two weeks and, talking to them once a week it's not enough for me I'm, I love my kids to yes, death yes. I love them yes. and they're two hours away mm. you know and I, I don't I don't say nothing bad about her leaving I would have left me too you know I was disconnected all I want to do is work yeah. I was I was mean you know not abusive but just wasn't connecting yeah. you know I, I just yeah. thought I was doing that's how I learned yeah. you know my dad was in Vietnam and messed his head up and that's how I learned yeah Chris, I am uh, so sorry for everything that has happened to you from the time of being so young in the childhood, the, the losing the friend, losing your mother, losing now your wife and your children. Chris, there is a solution, and there is a God that loves you. He loves you, and he wants to lead you, and he wants you to know him. And you have to make the decision to surrender to him. He's the only one that can heal you from the inside out. He's the only one that can make the difference in your life. He's the only thing that can the only one that can make all things new. He's the only one that can remap the way your mind thinks. He's the only one that can restore the relationship with your wife and just, and restore the relationship that he's calling for you to have with him. We have to go to a quick break, but I'm going to give you a phone number on that break, and I want you to call that phone number. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Chris, do you have a piece of paper and a pen handy? Um, I'm getting one right now. Okay. Because, Chris, you're still young. Your life is not over. But you know, deep down in your soul, you can't keep living the way that you're living because this loneliness in you is causing people to walk away from you. And I, the thing that I heard you say that was so profound is I don't blame her for living. I don't blame her. I would have left me too. And so that's humility right there. The fact that you're calling in today is humility right there. And so I, I want to give you a phone number of somebody that helped me. Okay. win the battle against loneliness that helped me to walk me through my darkest days of suicide they helped to walk me through the healing that i needed from my childhood and that i needed for my own mistakes that i made and i continue to pile on more and more mistakes so i want you to write this phone number down uh, okay. this is an individual that has made a major difference in my life the phone number is 512 366 Three six six five six seven eight. Seven eight. Okay. What's her name? Lavon Atnip. She's a very wise person. Okay. And she's been a spiritual mom to me. Awesome. She's. Danny, I I I gotta tell you the truth. My wife, she was so into you, and I was so negative towards you. Yeah. 
um, in our marriage, and then I, I I started listening to you, and then I have a sister-in-law that's met you several, several times, uh, Mary Jess, and um, I have you on my Facebook. <laughs> I believe in you. I went clear to Texas. We drove 24 hours one way. Wow. I went down a weekend and seen you and um, in Houston, that's, and I trust you. I don't trust nobody, Nanny. I don't. I understand. I understand, Chris. I, I, I know your story all too well. I lived that story. So, brother, promise me, listen to me. I'm so proud of you that you have already made changes. There's no question. But here's what I feel in my gut. What I feel in my gut is that God wants to restore your marriage. That's what I believe. I've seen the craziest miracles happen. And I believe your wife loves you. And everyone comes to a breaking point. I don't even care if she's with somebody else. I, I've seen the craziest, wildest things happen. Wow. And I believe that there is love waiting for you. Can I pray for you right now? Yes. Okay. Father, I thank you so much for Chris. I thank you, Lord God, for this divine appointment. I thank you, Lord God, that you fashioned him in his mother's womb, and it was for a purpose. And I thank you, Lord, for the honesty that he just spoke that is going to help so many people. Father, I thank you that you have made him skillful, a skillful craftsman, just like what you talk about in the Bible. You called only the best skilled craftsmen to help build the temple and to build all the various things that you wanted to be built at that time. Father, Chris is just like one of those skilled craftsmen. Father, I know that you know him through and through, and I know that you desire for him to know you. So, Lord, I, I pray that today is the day that there is a complete surrender and a complete trust in you that comes from him. Chris, I just want you to pray this after me, okay? Yeah. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You know my mistakes. You know my mistakes. You know my past. You know my past. You know my father. No, my father. What he struggled with. What he struggled with. That has been passed down to me. Well, that, sorry, that has I been passed to... down to me. Has passed down to me. I don't want it. I don't want it. You were the one who put me on this earth. You're the one that put me on this earth. You made me. You made me. I want to know what you made me for. I want to know what you made me for. Because it can't be. It can't be. Just to be broken. Just to be broken. And miserable and lonely. Miserable and lonely. God, I miss my children. God, I miss my children. I want to see them every day. I want to see them every day. I want to experience love. I want to experience love. I want to experience trust. I want to experience trust. Deep inside of my soul, I want to experience it. Even inside my soul, I want to experience it. I want to be alive. I want to be alive. Truly alive. Truly alive. Not just existing. Not just existing. So, God, I give you. God, I give you. My life. My life. I give you the mess that I've made. I give you the mess I made. And you said if I believe. You said if I believe. Then you would make all things new. You would make all things new. I need you. I need you. And I ask you. I ask you. To come into my heart. Come into my heart. Wake me up. Wake me up. Shake me up. Shake me up. And let me feel your life moving through my veins. Make me feel your life going through my veins. Yes. Let me feel your life going through my heart. Let me feel your life going through my heart. I need a new life. I need a new life. Jesus. Jesus. It is written. It is written. That you came to this earth. You came to this earth. Sent by God the Father. I'm sorry. Sent. I'm, I'm cut out. Sent by God the Father. Sent by God the Father. To lay down your life. To lay down your life. That was perfect. That was perfect. You were sinless. You were sinless. And you laid down your life to cover me. 
And you lay down your life to cover me. To cover my sins, my mistakes, my past drinking. Cover down, cover up my sins, my past, my drinking. To cover the mistake that happened with my friend. To cover up the mistake that happened to my friend. <laughs> that if I believe in you, you forgive me of all of my sin. Believe in you, you forgive me for all of my sins. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Every time I've denied you. Every time I denied you. You forgive me right now of that. You, you forgive me for right now for that. Every time I said words to my wife that I shouldn't have. Every time I said words to my wife that I shouldn't have. You have forgiven me for that. You have forgiven me for that. The pain I've brought on myself. The pain I've brought on myself. Through greed. Through greed. You forgive me right now for that. You forgive me right now for that. I receive that forgiveness. I forgive that. For I receive that forgiveness. And I choose to forgive myself. And I forgive yeah. myself. Yes. For everything. For everything. So, Jesus, I confess with my mouth. Jesus, I confess with my mouth. That you died on the cross and you rose from the dead. You died on the cross and you rose from the dead. That I might be free. That I might be free. From all this pain and loneliness. From all this pain and loneliness. I give it to you right now. I give it to you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray now. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I pray blessing over Chris. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, go and fill him right where he is standing. Fill him right now where he's at. God, I pray that you cover him with your Holy Spirit and that you engulf him with the Father's love, the true Father's love. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit guides him from this moment forward and there is a mark that today is the day that March 18th of 2015, that this day is the beginning of a brand new life, that he now is a son of the Most High God, marked by the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that there's an instant healing and an instant deliverance I bind in the name of Jesus loneliness. You're a foul, filthy, lying spirit. I bind the, the spirit of greed. You are also nothing but a liar. I break your powers off of my brother Chris right now in Jesus' name. You will no longer, no longer have him in your hands. He is in the Father's hands and only the Father's hands. God, I pray for restoration of the marriage. I pray for restoration for the sake of the children. God, I also pray you protect the ears of the kids, that the mother would never say anything ne negative about the father as that creates a bad identity for those kids. Lord, I thank you and I respect that Chris refuses to say anything bad about his wife for the same reason. Father, I pray that you give grace, mercy, and peace over him right now that passes all understanding. And I pray for a, a mother-son type of a relationship with LaVon and Chris, that as she has walked me through these things, that Chris also is going to walk through these things and be completely restored, redeemed, healed, set free, and delivered. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Chris, I am so confident, I am so confident that God has a great miracle in store for you. There's no doubt in my mind that he does. I want you to call Yvonne right now and tell her that you just talked to me and set up an appointment and do whatever it takes to get that. And I want you to do exactly what she tells you to do. I met with her. I had to drive actually um, an hour each way every Friday for two hours I was in a session with her. So that was four hours out of my day every Friday and I was a workaholic. And I'm telling well, you, every week, I tried to talk myself out of going to talk to her. Every week, man. For that whole time, I'm like, no, I got too many things to do. I got this appointment. I'm behind on this. But I'm telling you, once I got in that seat and I started to talk, and she started to put wisdom inside of me, man, every time I left, I went, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I did that. I was so yeah. lifted up and so encouraged and had answers to problems. And I'm telling you, slowly but surely, slowly but surely, I turned into a completely different person. And that's the person talking to you today. So I'm confident. You stay in touch with us. Please stay in touch with us. And I'm really, really proud of you for calling today. Thank you. I, I can't I can't thank you enough. I can't. <laughs> I'm so grateful for your call. You have no idea. This made my day big time.
So I'm Thank proud you. of you, Chris. I'm really, 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 really proud of you. Okay, you. hang up with me. Go call Avon. God bless you. I will. All right, bye. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Go to dannyjohnson.com to find out about our next live event, First Steps to Success in Orlando, Florida. For families in Santa Pancha, Nicaragua, life is filled with fear and struggle. They don't have enough food for their kids, clean water is hard to find, and they're living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel on top of mining tunnels that could explode and sink at any moment. But a miracle is in the making, and you can be a part of transforming this village. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha to see how you can help. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org, and click on Santa Pancha. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are gonna help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's gonna feel. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Wow, what a break we just had. <laughs> I wish you could have been involved what happened on that break as well. Um, in fact, yeah. Anyway, um, your life can change in a moment. And if you uh, were one that's been battling with loneliness, I want to give you a phone number of somebody that helped me through my battle of loneliness. I gave a baby up for adoption when I was 18. I listened to all the wrong people who told me that I wouldn't be a good parent. I listened to all the wrong people that said that, that the child was going to suffer because I would be a single mom. I listened to a lot of manipulation and I did the most unthinkable thing. And for 14 years, I felt such a terrible loneliness inside of me because of doing something I never wanted to do. There's decisions that we make that causes us to make worse decisions. And those worse decisions brought in loneliness. But I'm so grateful that I encountered a woman a wise woman who helped walk me through that. I wanna give you her phone number because if you battle with loneliness, she can help you as she helped me. Her phone number is 512-366-5678. Her name is LaVon Atnip. Again, that's 512-366-5678. Call her now. I don't care what the cost is. I don't care how long you're gonna have to talk to her. It's worth it because a life that you're not living is not the life of the destiny that is calling out to you. Another tool that you can use to help you that I'd love to give you as a gift is this book right here, First Steps to Wealth. It tells you how I walked out of being homeless, totally isolated, and how I created a, a crazy career that paid millions of dollars, that today the millions goes to taking care of the poor. I draw no salary from anything that I do. First Steps to Wealth, it's your copy right now. All you have to do is call 866-760-8255. Again, that's 866-760-8255. Get your free copy. You pay the shipping to get it to your house and we'll pay for the $15 book to get it to you. Lastly, think about the loneliness of someone like Audless, who has four children, she's a single mom, and every day she has to decide which child is going to eat because on $2 a day, she cannot feed all four in the same day. Could you imagine the loneliness of having twin little girls that are nine months old and picking which one of them are going to get milk today? That is a crazy, awful level of loneliness. But you can help Audelis as well as the many countless others who are suffering through the same thing. And one cure for loneliness is to help someone else who is going through a struggle that's far worse than your own. Go to kingsransom.org right now. Kingsransom.org. Or you can dial this phone number, 888-291-7123. Again, that's 888-291-7123. Two, three, and do what you can. You can give $5 right now that will help to put some food on the table for Adolis's children. Or you can put in $5,200 and we can build her a house, put her in business, and give her clean water and food that is gonna take care of her and her family for life. Kingsransom.org, do what you can. This is Danny Johnson. I hope you enjoyed today's program. 
We will meet you tomorrow, same time, same place. God bless. This has been The Danny Johnson Show. If you want to hear more, visit us at dannyjohnson.com. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success.